again, I'm Doc Harmon here with you for a very special Science Tuesday. Special because it's Friday, but also because it's Shark Day here at Westchester Children's Museum, and the title of our program is Sharks Inside and Out. Now today, we're going to study, learn about, and explore a real shark. Not a live one, but one that's been preserved to do studies just like this. We'll look at both the outside features of the shark and also what's inside. Today, we are going to be scientists, marine biologists. Now, several things I want to mention right at the start. First, this will be a scientific investigation of both the exterior and the interior organs of the shark. And if any of your viewers are particularly sensitive, you might want to think about waiting until our next show. Second, there is no blood in the shark. It was removed by the company that preserved it, and the blood was replaced by colored dyes that will help us to study the fish's circulatory system. Third and last, we all know that we've been told <clears throat> that sharks, many sharks, are on the verge of extinction, and that's true. But the shark that we're using, the spiny dogfish shark, is nowhere near extinction. As a matter of fact, it's in such a surplus, they harvest it for pet food. So don't worry about that. Now what I want to do is to show you a list of maybe three or four kinds of sharks, just to introduce us to the shark subject, ones that I know you've seen before, but here we go. Okay, what did you think about that last one, the whale shark? Was it big? It's the biggest living fish that exists. Now, we're going to come down in size a little bit because I want to introduce to you our special guest, the dogfish shark, the spiny dogfish shark called Squalus acanthius. What I want to show you on him first are the fins, which with lot of storage have gotten pushed down. So the reason he's called the spiny dogfish shark is that right here on this dorsal fin and right here on this dorsal fin, I can see that something has been cut off. That something is a spine. And the people who preserve the shark are afraid that we would hurt ourselves on it. There is also a dogfish shark that doesn't have spines, but this is the spiny dogfish shark. I thought you should know why they call it that. Now the fins, this is the power fin right here, the tail fin. The other fins, some of which have kind of folded under with a long storage, those are, are dorsal fins and they help guide the, uh, the shark. Now, the external part, I'm, I'm pointing to this because this is where they've cut the shark to inject the dyes. And the reason I'm showing it to you is there's a little piece down in here of a tail bone, but it's not really a bone. It's the spine of the shark, and it's made of cartilage. Now the cartilage is what distinguishes sharks. Almost all fishes are what we call bony fishes. They have real bones. But the fact is that sharks only have cartilage, like in your nose or in your ear. <clears throat> now what that means is, of all the sharks that ever existed, there's no fossil record because the cartilage just dissolves into the sea. But in sharks, they actually, we have no record of anything except jaws. Now here, I want to show you one thing about the skin, and you'll just have to take my word for it. 
that going in this direction, it's very easy for me to stroke the side of the shark. Going this way is not easy. It's like sandpaper. And that's because instead of scales, sharks have little things called denticles, very tiny pieces of uh, skin, their skin covering, and it allows them to swim forward. By the way, for swimming, you probably know that sharks really have to keep swimming all the time, else they would sink. Now we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But I want to show you a few things about the outside of the shark, besides the fins and Now the shark mouth has a teeth in it, and you can see that our shark has teeth that you can almost not even see. Now I want to remind you that most sharks have teeth that look like this. Now the class of sharks that are called elasmo branch have teeth that are not attached to the jaws, and they keep losing the teeth all the time, and the teeth behind them are almost like on a conveyor belt. And a shark can lose as many as three to 5,000 teeth in its lifetime, but not our guy. I also want to show you two little openings right here. They don't go anywhere. They correspond to our noses. This is the smell organ of the shark, which is very, very sensitive, much more than ours. As a matter of fact, he can sense direction by which one of these openings the scent comes to first, and he will turn in that direction. But there is no connection to the, what we call the respiratory system. It's simply closed off. Now for hearing, I'll just have to tell you where the ears are, because the opening is so small that unless you have a big magnifying glass, you can't see it right back here. Matter of fact, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, there it is, but it's very tiny. Now, on top here, these are holes that air, that seawater can come into, and it can go into the system, the gill system right here. We're going to look more closely at the gill system in a few minutes. But the water can come in here just like the water can come in the mouth. I should also mention for the mouth that sharks, unlike bony fishes, the mouth is underneath. Did you ever think about that? Every fish you ever saw that wasn't a shark or a skate or a ray has mouth in the front. Shark has mouth underneath. Now why it evolved like that, we don't know. I should tell you though that sharks were around 200 million years before the dinosaurs. They're still now relatively unchanged. So it's doing something right. Now we're going to take a look at some of the internal organs of the shark. Okay, a closer look at the belly. Now a few minutes ago when I held these out, I think I called them dorsal fins, that they really are not. Uh, these are pectoral fins. Uh, I misspoke. Anyway, someone has already done a little bit of handiwork here, but it's kind of messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit open on either side. And this fish has been preserved for so long, it's going to be a little bit leathery. But I'll start with what, if you watch TV shows of operations, give me a tin blade. That's a tin blade. So we're going to go a tin, tin blade on a shark and oh, I see this is going to be really tough. He is very leathery. What we do is we need to cut out the patch of skin that covers this area here. Maybe we can do it, it's not too bad. I may have to finish up with kitchen shears. This is not so bad. 
this isn't quite as tough as I thought. I actually was able to do it with just the knife. Now, we're going to take a look inside. We'll discard this. We'll need to open it up a little bit more. Now, at some point, when they cut the shark open, they managed to do some serious work on the liver here. But this big section over here, you know what, I think I will finish with the scissors. No, oh, there, there we go, okay. 10 blades doing fine. And we're gonna talk about the same things that we have, that the shark has, and some things that are quite different. We all have livers, but none of them like fish livers. To expose this, I'm going to have to go even higher up. Scissors to the rescue. And just like in us, they call this the peritoneal cavity. But I'm gonna lift out a liver. And as you can see, this is what the problem was. They damaged the liver when they actually exposed this. Uh, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of slicing. The liver is actually in three lobes in the fish. And it's very oily. Now, as a matter of fact, they used to sell shark liver oil as something that would make you well if you had a cold or something like that. Now, this particular liver is in several pieces, so I'm not going to try to pretend that it's in good shape. It's kind of fused in with the other organs in there. Okay, so this is liver and this is liver. And when I say it's really oily, I want to show you that it actually floats in water. And it helps the shark maintain buoyancy. See, it floats to the top to the, of the water, it doesn't sink. And that's because it has oil in it. And oil, as you know, floats on water. Now we're beginning to see some of the other things that are important. more liver was hiding. Now we're getting into cartilage, which is very hard to cut with a knife, and I'm going to have to use the scissors to get in there. There's a cartilage bar that runs right across here. Now I'm going to have to stand up to get this, if that's okay. You can hear the cartilage snap. That's to protect the shark's heart. Yeah, this would have been impossible with a knife. We're almost there, folks. It's 
slippery because of the oil and now you're going to get a nice shot of the heart when they injected dye into the shark they used red dye for arteries blue dye for veins and yellow dye for things that have to go to the liver. You can see the liver has a slightly yellowish cast to it. I need to cut a little bit of this out. We're going straight through cartilage here. Protective cartilage. There we go. Now in a minute I'll expose a little bit more so you can see it better. Now right there is the shark's heart. And you can see that uh, it's not very distinct, but you can see little red lines on there. And those are the arteries that are, in <clears throat> that are feeding the heart. Now all, the, all of the circulatory system depends on this particular configuration. This is called a ventricle. You remember we have a ventricle, we have two of them. Sharks, by the way, only have two chambers in their heart. We have a four chamber heart, they only have two chambers. So the blood coming back from the gills where it picks up oxygen goes into a little receiver place here that I'm gonna try to go. Maybe what I'll do is, oh, now you can see that dark part. This is where the blood comes in, collects, it goes to the heart, out to the gills, and back to the rest of the circulatory system. Well, while you were gone, I pulled out the rest of the liver you can see why they say liver is such a large organ, actually in all sharks. Helps them to float like you saw in the water. Also while you were gone, I cut out a gill. Sharks always have either five or seven gills. This one has one, two, three, four, five. Now there's one shark that actually is called a six giller, but that is very rare. Now I cut the gill out because I want to show you this is the surface of the gill. These are the little blood vessels. They're colored red because of the dye that was injected into them, into the arteries. Up on the top it's really blue. So what you can see is it's coming in, the blood is coming in, becoming oxygenated, and it le becomes an arterial blood. So this is what a single gill looks like, and the shark has, this particular shark has five. Now we're going to progress, and first of all, just gonna get rid of this to clean the place up a little bit. While I was monkeying around down there, I actually found the gallbladder. We have a gallbladder. Now, we don't have gills. What do we have instead of gills? Anybody? Lungs. That's where we exchange oxygen. So that's a place where we're very different. And we have a four-chamber heart instead of a two-chamber heart. Now, we're going to look at the actual digestive system. Now, they have an esophagus. It comes down right here. And I'm going to cut it so that we can lift 
the stomach out. Sometimes, well actually usually we find some food because they feed all the time. So we, we never know exactly what we're gonna find once we get in. I need to dislodge this. Cutting through the esophagus now in the top part of the stomach. And just like in humans, they call this the cardiac part of the stomach because it's near the heart. Almost there. Now in a minute, as soon as it gets free, which won't be long, There we go. You can see the veins that are on in the stomach there. It's actually a very nice pattern. That's taking blood from the stomach back to the heart. <clears throat> now, we're gonna cut the stomach open, see what we might find. Now, the stomach is very large and, uh-oh, We have another one, some sort of a minnow, or I'm not really much of an ichthyologist, but we have a meal for you. We took away the meal. Oops. Another one. This guy had just fed, uh, had a feast. Here's a hunk of undigested something. I have no idea what it is. But finally, feel, oh, there's the, there's, <laughs> there's a piece of a third one that hadn't been digested yet. Who knows who belongs to that? I see fish scales. What a hearty eater. Now I can finally show, oh, some skeleton. By the way, as scientists, I don't want you to say, ew, I want you to say, ah, now that's interesting. Now we can finally see the inside of the stomach. Now, most shark stomachs that I've dealt with before, and I've seen a lot of them, aren't really this big, and you can see why this one was so big. But they have really interesting characteristics. Unlike our stomachs, there's lots of folds in there. And those folds allow for increased absorption of digested meals. Now, they also act like an accordion. Now, normally, the stomachs that I usually get are not nearly that big, but you can see why they, they were, these were that big. I keep pulling out little pieces of fish. Oh, there's another one. Boy, oh boy, what a... What a hog, should be called a hogfish. Now, this also, where the esophagus comes in, is a place where they can get absorption <clears throat> of food. Okay, now let's pass the stomach, okay? I should also show you this particular shiny looking thing here. This is called mesentery, and this is where the blood vessels take away the nutrients that the stomach has actually uh, produced. Now we're going to the intestine. Now in our intestines, we have like, in adults, we have like 30 feet of coiled intestine. Now this is all the intestine that the shark has right here. Who knows what we're going to find this time. But you'll notice, I hope, you can see some rings there. Can you see those rings? Those rings are not actually rings, it's a spiral. The whole intestine is called a spiral valve. Now I'm gonna see if I can slit it to show you that. Instead of having, like we have, a long, long intestine, 
they have an intestine that goes like this. It simply spirals and gives the food much longer time to digest. Okay, here we are in the spiral valve. And you can see the leaves of the spiral valve. See if I can get a little bit of the goopy stuff off. So you can see it a little bit better. Oops. My hands are so slippery. Let's see if this helps. There we go. Now we'll see if it's any clearer. You can see the valve a little bit better. Now it's hard for you to see that it's, I've, since I've cut it open, it's hard for you to see, but in fact, there is no direct passage down. It only goes in circles. And that allows for much better absorption. Well, now what we're going to do is I'm going to clean up this side, going to throw away some things, and we're going to make a last attempt to see one other organ, and that's the brain. See you soon. Now, while you were gone, I did a little bit of a cleanup. You always need to do cleanup when you dissect sharks like this. And for the last part, I'm going to see if we can get the brain out. Now, the brain is encased in a solid cage of cartilage. It's a block of cartilage to protect the brain. So it's going to take a while, and you'll see some pauses and some starts and some pauses, because to do the whole thing is going to take probably at least 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, I'll get started. Well, we're almost there. I'm not going to point out the different lobes of the brain because you wouldn't remember it anyway. But the sharp brain is more or organized more linearly than ours is. We have a brain that's like this with different parts over uh, in, not a sphere, but in a ball. And the shark's brain starts in the front and goes about this far back it's very narrow. So this is right here what I'm just about to show you. <clears throat> is about two-thirds of the shark's brain. Now if I go any further I'm probably going to mess the brain up. I'll probably cut it too much. So I just wanted you to see that that's how the big the shark's brain is. <clears throat> it has some lobes up front and this one, and there actually is one that is encased in, <clears throat> in cartilage right back here. And if I go any deeper, I'll really mess it up. But it has input from the eyes, from the nose, 
the electric sensing organs here. There's a whole bunch of organs along the side called the lateral line which sense pressure. They can sense tiny, tiny bits of pressure. There's electrical sensors up in this part that come into the brain and tell the fish what it wants in order to move. So I'm going to stop right there and we'll wrap up. Well, that about wraps it up for Shark Week. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I know that you probably are, have learned things. I certainly expect you did. But I want to also thank Margie and Lisa, who you already know from the many things that they do at the museum, for all the help that they did in putting this thing together. Could not have done it without them. But anyway, so long till next time. Doc Harmon. Bye-bye.